In the previous tutorial, I taught you how to change the width and height of a view programmatically in Java, like a text view or a button. Now we'll build off of that with a fun little project that continuously increases the size of a text view, as well as decreases it, by pressing two buttons over here. So you can go ahead and get started by copying the code in the activity main.xml for this basic layout. Then head on over to your main activity.java. It should look something like this with your two buttons and your text view. What we're going to do is create an on click listener and call it listener that we're going to set on our button. So I'm going to say new view on click listener, put a semicolon here, and then I'll say grow, which is my button to make the text view expand. And then I'll say grow that set on click listener, listener. If you do control D, we can copy that line and say the same thing for shrink. Now with the on click listener to mimic the behavior that we had over here where the app automatically makes the, button, the text view shrink in size and make it grow in size, we're going to use something called a countdown timer. So we're going to say new countdown timer. And then inside over here, you can see the parameters are the milliseconds in the future, which is how long we want it to run for. So I'm going to say 3000 milliseconds, which is three seconds. And the countdown interval is how often it will trigger this method if you do control I, how often it will trigger this method called on tick. So overall, our countdown timer will run for 3000 milliseconds and trigger this on tick uh, function every 100 milliseconds. So in total, this will be running 30 uh, times. Now what we're going to do is say dot start over here that will start the timer and provide a semicolon. And inside our on tick, this is where we're actually going to increase and decrease the size of our text view. So the first thing we have to do is check which button was pressed. So we're going to say if view dot get id equals r dot id dot grow and if you look over here this is the id for our grow button to expand the text view and this view object over here is coming from our on click methods so if the views id matches the id for the grow button what we're going to have to do is well first we're going to have to get the parameters the, the layout params for the text view so the view group dot layout params params equals and the name of my text view is text so i'll say text dot get layout params and if the, uh, the grow button was clicked, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say params dot width times equals, which basically means multiply it by itself. And uh, I'm going to say 1.1. You can change the factor however you want to. If you provide two, it's going to double in size every 100 milliseconds. But if you want a smooth motion, you want to make this number small. And you also want to make this, uh, this number small as well, because this is how often it refreshes. So I'm going to say 1.1. I'm also going to do the same thing for height. And then over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say params.width. Well, actually, let me just copy and paste this. This else statement is basically when the shrink button is pressed. If the ID of the button pressed was not the grow, then it had to be shrink. So I'm going to say divide by 1.1 instead. There's one thing to note before we run this, and that is because we're wrapping the content of our text tree over here, we're saying that the width and height our wrap content, what's going to happen is over here, params.width and params.height start off at negative numbers. So that's where we're just going to have to add a quick if check if statement over here. If params.width is uh, less than or equal to zero, if it's zero or negative, then we'll just set it to a default of 200 for the width and a default of uh, 200 for the height. Actually, we'll increase it for the width and make it that 400. And I'm just going to put this outside of this if statement and then do that. So once again, to iterate what this is doing is it's getting the parameter, it's getting the layout params for the text view and it's checking if the width is less than zero, which happens when we say wrap content for the text view, because we're not explicitly saying like width is going to be 30 SP and it's going to be 20 SP. We're just saying wrap content. So that's why it starts off as a, at a negative number. And that's what we're doing over here. We're checking if it's negative, then set it to 400 and 200. Otherwise, if the grow button was pressed, increase the size, otherwise divide and decrease the size by a factor of 1.1. And remember, 400 and 200 are in pixels. Oh, actually, there's one thing I forgot, and that's to actually update the parameters of the text view by saying text.setLayoutParams and providing this params object that we just modified. And now when we run this and we press the grow button, you can see that it grows. And we press the shrink button, you can see that it shrinks. But if you notice, if we press the grow and shrink button at the same time, it staggers like this. And this is going to be the last quick change that we make to our code. 
So currently what's happening is every time the, the on click method is triggered when the user clicks on a button, it creates a new countdown timer. So that means when I press the grow button, it, it creates a new countdown timer to increase the size. And at the same time, when I press the shrink button, it's running two countdown timers at the same time. And that's why you're seeing that, uh, that stagger where it's like, both growing and shrinking at the same time. So in order to fix this, what we're gonna do is create a global countdown timer variable, call it countdown timer. And over here in our on click, we're gonna set the countdown timer equal to new countdown timer. But before we actually start this timer over here with the start method, we're gonna check if the countdown timer, if the countdown timer is not null, we're gonna cancel it. So basically what this will do is when the button is pressed, it will check if there's a countdown timer that's been, that has been running, it's gonna cancel it and it's gonna create a new countdown timer and then it's gonna start that new countdown timer. So let's run this. So when I run the app and press the grow button and then the shrink button, you can see that it stops growing and immediately starts shrinking because we specified over here to cancel the, the countdown timer if it's not null. So it immediately stops the grow timer. And what you should have gained from this tutorial was how to use the countdown timer, as well as how to programmatically change the width and height of a view in Java. And this was just a fun exercise to practice doing that because I already covered it in the previous tutorial. In the future tutorials, I will cover how to change the view's margins programmatically. Like over here, I specified that the margin bottom for this text view from the button is 30 SP. But what if you wanted to change that programmatically? Well then that's what I'm going to be covering in the next tutorial and subscribe to stay tuned for when that comes out.